an elevation, a floor plan, and your grid. So every square on the grid is represented here on your elevation and your floor plan. This is an elevation of the back wall. So it has 12 feet across, and so does your elevation. What this is, is as if you could just be everywhere at once facing that wall squarely so that this, all of it, is the same distance from you throughout its width and height. The thing about elevations, the important thing about them, is that they tell you the height of something. So you can see by this, if this is three feet, then this is just slightly higher than three feet. If this is two feet, then my box is just slightly narrower than the two foot, the two foot width. So if I were to draw this, if it were read against the wall, it would be real easy to draw it, but it isn't. It's not. The floor plan is telling me that it, see, it's five feet deep, and so is your grid, five feet deep, and 12 feet wide, and this is 12 feet wide. So this is telling me that the box is one foot away from the back wall. This is our back wall, and it's also three and a half, three and a little bit in from the right wall and a little bit back from the front wall, one foot from the front of the grid. So let's mark that. This is the back wall and this is the back wall. Let's show what the back wall is. This is our right wall. I don't know if you can see these colors, but this is, I'm using green here to show this is the right wall. And this is the left wall. On our elevation, this all we can see here is the back wall. So I'm putting it in blue because on my grid I've put it in blue. This floor plan is just showing the floor. That's all it can show. So when I draw that in, I'm going to use another color just to show the floor. Okay, so this is the floor. That's all we can see here. And you have to imagine that you're hovering over the floor at a five foot height. And everything you see below, you see it from the same distance. So I've got this blue line is my back wall square for square, and this is my floor, square for square. This is our left wall. We'd have to make a separate elevation, just like this one, to show the left wall. Now let's make this box a little easier to see so that we can map it out on our floor. The And you'll notice that it's just a little bit 
above three feet and it's just a little bit narrower than two feet and now when you look at it on the floor plan it's a little narrower than two feet but we have an additional bit of information it goes back three feet there's also more information if this now is our right wall over here, we don't have it in the drawing, but this is our right wall. This wall here, that's right there. And this is our left wall on this side. Then we can judge how far away this is from our white right wall on the floor. So let's start putting in these corners. It's one foot back, one foot back, and it's three and a little bit over. One, two, three, and a little bit. So this is kind of a judgment call where you put that. And it's over, and it's not quite two. So we'll put it in here. And it's one foot back, see, one foot back. One foot back this way and three and a bit this way. So we've got our first two dots, one, two, three, and then we've got one box left over until the back wall. Now, to get that to be in the right place though, you need to line your set square up with the vanishing point and your first dot. So if you line those two up together, and then go back three, there's our last dot, then we've got it in the right place. Do the same thing on the other side, go back three, and now not only is it in the right place, it's also the right size. So let's Complete the box now. And let's go back to our elevation and see how that agrees with what we're doing. So we've got three and a bit boxes from the right wall. This is the right wall that we cannot see. It's just represented by this line, that blue line. So we've got three and a bit over from the left wall, one, two, three, and a bit. And this is the one thing an elevation cannot tell you. It cannot tell you how far away it is from the front wall, the front of our grid, or how far away it is from the back wall. It can't tell you that. But the floor pen can and does. It tells you that. What the elevation can tell you that the floor plan can't is how tall it is and it's three, a little bit more than three feet tall. So, but it does agree with where we've placed it. It agrees with that. So if I were to bring this to the front, the front of the grid, I would see that this is where that mark is on my elevation. It's in the same place on my grid and on my elevation and then I go over one, and if I were to use my vanishing point and bring this to the front, you see how important the vanishing point is here, because we have to be able to see how much smaller things are, just that short distance away, and that's how we get it. We use that vanishing point, and it tells us. So, and this agrees with my elevation, that it's a little bit before seven. So, We've got all these grid lines, but you don't have to stay within them. You can go outside them. If you use a half a foot or three quarters of a foot, you, you do that, whatever you need. Now, to get the height, though, that's shown on our elevation, we have to walk your object back to the wall and measure it on the wall, against the wall. And this is our closest wall, so let's measure it against our closest wall. So. We're going to go back 
go from the front here and go straight along the same line. And when we hit the wall, a perspective line, we go straight up. Now my elevation is telling me if I walk this over to the wall, it's telling me that it's a little more than three feet tall. Just a little more. So I'll go up and I'll go up one, two, three, and a little more. And make sure it's on the same line as the one I started with on the floor. I'm going to follow it right up. Okay, so we bring this across now. And the only way to find out is to draw a vertical, and then we'll see. And if you're anything like me, your dotted lines will never cross. You have to put one in. So there's my dotted line. So now I know at this point on the grid, on the floor, this is how tall, about three feet, two or three inches is. And it's allowable with our beautiful cross corners as our guide to to appearance to go in there and make your line too long. You can make it too long in order to get an accurate corner. And another way, once you get into this, the best way to do this is to put all your verticals up first. I have difficulty getting everyone to do that because they don't want to make their line too long. But the danger in not putting your vertical up first in doing it the way that I did it is that you don't know how to find the height after that. Because look, I had a, that big gap there. I didn't even have a line to cross. So better to put your verticals up first. Now, I just form the box the way we formed our box in our last assignment. I just do the same thing. I just use now my vanishing point. And where it crosses, I turn around and go the other way. And this should all line up. Fingers crossed, this should all line up at the top, and it does. So there's our box. And we leave all the hidden lines in. Because if we don't, when we go to map our shadow, we'll have trouble. So we want to do that. Another thing that's really helpful is to give a little color to all your different planes. So you might reserve one color for the top of everything and one color for the sides of everything so that you have a, a visual language for what's a top plane. And what's a front plane. You can even use different colors. It doesn't have to be the same color. And you don't need to press. You just sort of gently float your color on. And they don't have to all be the same color either. You can use different colors. And this will help to understand the plane changes. They're called plane changes because what's meant by the term plane is that it's a flat surface that goes in a different direction to the plane before it. So even your nose, you have a top plane for your nose, a side plane and an under plane. And they're not by any means square like this, but they are, they are now, once you do this, you see, they are turning in different directions. Now, once you do this, your box looks a little more handsome, but it's disappeared. So you've got to go in with your pen tail sign pen. You already guessed this, I know. And give this some real form. Some. Now, on the colored pencil, it might take the sign pen a little longer to dry, 
so you don't want it to um, bleed so you've got to so in this little exercise we've covered a number of things most importantly the relationship between a floor plan and elevation and your perspective that all the squares are represented on all three drawings and one will help the other in order to communicate everything the floor plan and, and elevations are all about information they're the facts the Perspective is the wow factor. It's the one that is meant to create atmosphere, and you can do that too on a floor plan and elevation, that's for sure. But they're the ones that, it's the one that really is a chance for you to show what you want someone to feel like in the room that you've created. So this is the assignment grid drawing. And you can see that, as I was saying, I use different colors. So I put all my top planes in yellow, my front planes in a turquoise, and then these planes all facing that way, I put them in with a purple. So that works as well. I think actually it works a little better. In the videos for in-class exercise, what you'll find are the instructions for how to draw a two-point object in a one-point perspective grid. You'll also have instruction on how to create a vaulted ceiling. Ours is going to be a gabled ceiling, and following that, it'll tell you how we'll be doing our gabled ceiling. And you're also going to get a chance to make a large bookcase in there, or a large shelving unit, built-in shelving cabinetry. I haven't given you floor plan or elevation for these um, to save some time so that you can just go ahead but this information is crucial how you relate the one to the other